Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest Series 24, uh, Book 3, Morax the Wrecking Mist. Give me a second, I need to get Crocor's book for next time. Uh, but yeah, we are back with another book of Beast Quest, and it is number, tw uh, I don't know what number it is, but um, I'm sure I'll remind myself later. But yeah, we're back with Beast Quest, and we're almost done with Series 24, as we're on Book 3 now. And that, this is uh, Morax the Wrecking Menace. And I'm actually happy we have a creature that is not most well known to the public, but you could be confused by it from others. And that is, Morax is based on a creature, I think, it, yeah. Morax, I think, is based on a creature which I know as the Pangolin, which is a creature of armoured plating, similar to an armadillo, but the armadillo is like a shell-based creature and such. Um, then you've got, uh, and you could also argue porcupine or hedgehog, but they're more of like little spiky quills. This is actually armoured plating, and the pangolin has armoured plating very similar to this, more than an armadillo, because the armadillo is more like an armoured shell, if you would say. But that's just my thoughts on the subject of where the idea came from. Anyway, the other theory is dinosaur, but I'm not going with that route due to the horns on the side of the head. By the way, pangolins don't have horns on the side of the head. It's just a way to add some more beastage to it. Anyway, that being said, though, let's begin the awesomeness that is uh, Morax, the Wrecking Menace. And uh, as of right now, it's... Uh, I don't know what's better, Flugger or Morax. And I'll get into that while at the end, maybe, if I can remember it. But let's get through this. Eleanor and Daltek were luckily... Oh yeah, I should mention uh, before I start. Um, in their story analysis, if you haven't read this book already, go and do so as we're on book three of this series. So yeah, keep that in mind. But let's get through this. Eleanor and Daltek were luckily to be alive as they emerged from the rubble. After Daltek used his magic to heal them, they quickly summoned Storm as they... Storm is a horse, by the way. They quickly summoned Storm the horse as they prepared to escape... We get a recap on Tom being turned evil by Rhea, but Eleanor climbed out and lowered a rope down to Daltic. They then used Tom's compass to help locate where Tom is. Our heroes were off on their adventure. By the way, there's a jet going by, so you might hear some noise in the background. Tom and Rhea were continuing on their quest with still curi while still curious what Rhea's plan was. But again, she reminded Tom it wasn't his business the villains landed near the o an oasis with a lush jungle around it. After some pacing, Rhea and Tom were luckily jumped by a pack of monkeys. I should also mention that Rhea states that Morax, the beast that Tom will face next, is the most deadliest of the three spawns of Crocol. Eleanor and Daltek were now in a forest. After some pacing, they discovered some trees had been strengthened had been strangely marked. They assumed it was a sign that, the that there was a tribe nearby. Then later, Eleanor thought she heard Tom and planned to help him, only to have Storm in need of rescue. They then, they then heard something coming. It was a large, smooth, round black boulder. It nearly ran over Storm until our heroes saved him, of course. But as the boulder rolled by, Eleanor believed she spotted an armor plating and an eye inside the boulder, which Deltic that which Deltic explained that was no boulder that could have been a beast. I see the series is reminding us Storm constantly needs rescuing and that was the beast. That proves my point of this beast being based off an animal called a pangolin which I've mentioned prior. Tom and Rhea were tossed around by the monkey tribe until eventually they were tied and taken to the elder Rani. She explained they, were, they weren't kidnapping them, just saving them from Morax. Tom explained they were here to defeat Morax, but the tribe had their doubts, so they made them stay for the night. While Rhea couldn't move, Tom could, and he decided to start a forest fire to lure Morax to him, because obviously he doesn't want to wait any time. Um, Eleanor and Daltek continued forward until they smelled the forest fire. Assuming Tom was in danger, they went to rescue, the, they went to rescue him, so they went to the source of the fire only to discover a destroyed fence made of some strong trees. They assumed it was to keep the beast out or something in. They then pressed on, and Eleanor rescued a baby monkey man. The mother was so great was the mother was not so grateful, by the way, explaining of what Tom had done. 
And as for our heroes, they pressed on. They finally came face to face with Morax. Uh huh. So we're making progress there. Tom and Rhea could. Uh, Tom and Rhea could do some. Uh, where was it? Tom and Rhea would. Uh, could. Uh, could do so. Where was I at? Could do much. Uh, Tom and Rhea were doing so much destruction. They were now in a. Yeah, they were. Tom and Rhea had done so much destruction. There we go. They were now in a safe in the treetops, awaiting for Morax. And soon he emerged. Tom gave his attention and tried to lure him in, away from Rhea. Now the beast was unrolled, which was perfect, as Eleanor managed to, to shoot an arrow as, he, as a sneak attack in Morax's flesh. Tom yelled at her for trying to help him, and prepared to face Morax once again. Only this time the baby monkey man came rushing in Morax's path. Tom felt a sensation, an instinct feeling that he had to save the baby. He leaped in front of Morax and not, and took hold of the baby, but he was, but Morax was coming in fast and there was no time to run. First, this is great. This is t Tom's first true step at facing back, t uh, taking back his, taking back control of his life. Only problem is, last chapter, it ended with Eleanor and Daltek facing Morax. Now this chapter starts with Morax leaving our heroes and going to face the villains. Weird. Also, it's revealed Morax has a poisonous tongue. I should mention. Before he, they could be, but before they could be run over, Storm of all characters came to their rescue as he horse kicked Morax off course. Tom let the child go. He even thanked, he even thanked Tom, but still he was confused on what he'd done. Then Morax came back, but so did Daltek with the monkey people. They finally started a rebellion over the bully beast. Eleanor spotted Morox's weak spot, its underbelly, and tried to shoot it, but but it was so it was too late. Morox got off rolling again. Only this time he was going so fast he couldn't he didn't see where he was going. He crashed, and everyone hoped he was dead in the fiery blaze. Eleanor thought it was over, but Tom re Tom revealed it wasn't over, as he could sense the beast. Morox was indeed alive, so fire had no effect on him nor the weight of fallen trees. Tom was eager to prove himself, so he chucked his own mistress Rhea to distract the beast, as he wedged his shield until Morax's plating. Yeah, he wedged his shield into Morax's plating, so he couldn't enter his ball formation. Rhea ran away, and now Morax was furious of Tom. But before Tom was Morax Chow, he was saved by Eleanor, who shot a critical hit in Morax's underbelly, making him die and fade away, leaving nothing but his token and to in to yeah leaving nothing but t the token and Tom's shield. Both Eleanor and Tom grabbed the token, but Tom convinced Eleanor to let go of the token as Daltek needed help. So Eleanor reluctantly did so, allowing Tom and Rhea to escape. Tom felt like helping Eleanor as, he did, as his goodness was starting to come back. But Rhea reminded him of the final beast, Crocol. Uh, you know, as cr you know, the final beast, Crocol. He could now, he would now be the, Tom's next opponent, and that would be a worthy challenge for him. Which transferred Tom back to evil mode as they flew away. But yeah, there's the analysis for um, Morax the Wrecking Menaces. Hopefully it was good. A few scuffles here and there, but nothing too major. Uh, but let's uh, go over the characters now and then the beast. Uh, and the mobile thoughts. Starting off with Eleanor. She's the main character of this series, essentially. Um, again, she doesn't get much development. She's just the fill-in for Tom is not can't be the hero, so I've got to help him out. And it, it is nice to see her finally get her, her own uh, adventure where she's in the main role. Um, I just think she works better as a side character, though. I, I do think so. I mean, I've been playing... I mean, in past, though, I've been complaining about... I've been complaining about um, Eleanor not getting the spotlight. But maybe she's just better suited for a side character. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So she does a lot of good stuff in this... In this uh, book, uh, she uh, follows Tom's path, see where he's going, and uh, she doesn't like the whole forest fire thing. She gets a moment of emotional turmoil when she sees a forest fire. She's like, oh no, I hope Tom's not in that fire because my parents died that way, and I don't want anything bad to him, especially the same fate. Um, as they, uh, But yeah, I feel like as they're progressing, Eleanor's get, getting more and more um, emotionally attached as a friend to Tom and hoping to get him back. So there is that there. Um, as for Daltek, he doesn't get much to do in this book, but he gets much enough. Storm gets a bit to do in this book, and that's saying something, because normally, and I, I really didn't think Storm would, like, have such a role anymore after the original series and stuff, like, after the six mark. 
But no, they brought him back and made him do something for once, which is awesome. They made him uh, kick Morax off course, which is awesome there. Um, then we've got the villains, starting off with Rhea. Again, she's not really much use at all. She just um, tells what Tom what to do and gets ticked off at him. She's essentially just a one note villain, just there to manipulate Tom and progress the story until we see what her true plan is in the final book, which I'm sure we'll get an explanation on. Um, Tom, of course, gets the most development because this is still his arc of trying to re retake control of his life, which he seems to be doing so now as he's finally um, had that moment of the child. Okay, back to Eleanor. She does have a moment of saving a baby monkey, I should mention, before anyone complains about that. Yeah, she does have that moment. But other than that, Tom also has a moment with the baby chimp as he, uh, monkey man, oh, where well, he saves the child from Morax and is willing to sacrifice his life to save that kid. And that's when Storm gets his badass moment as well. And so you got that there. Tom is still struggling to decide what side to do. But he's, it still shows, we also see that he's still a capable fighter. That you don't need to also just fight the beast in order to win it. You can use strategy. And he did so by plucking his shield in there to block the transformation. Which is cool. Like this beast was invulnerable. He couldn't be stopped. He was a rolling battering tank. Kind of like Blood War. But a better version of Blood War basically. Where he could he couldn't be stopped with his armored hide, and then Tom, Tom realized that if his armored hide is his greatest weapon, it's also his greatest weakness. So by pl plunging a, his shield in there, he prevented the transformation. So without it, he was nothing more than a walking tortoise essentially, and uh, his underbelly was exposed. Kadunk. But yeah, Eleanor. Oh yeah, I should also mention Eleanor took the winning shot on um, on uh, Morax, which again. It's going to have a good point for Eleanor, which is like, because one time we said, yeah, Flugger was killed by Daltek. Eleanor was killed this one. Did, and I think Eleanor killed Electro, but I might be wrong on that. I don't know, it's been a while. I mean, a lot has passed, but obviously my old review will correct me. And you guys, like, no, will say in the comments, like, but I'm pretty sure it was... Oh, Eleanor that got him. Yeah, I think Eleanor killed two and Flugger was Daltek. That's just my thoughts. Um, but yeah, um, now on to the beast himself, Morax, who is arguably, well, he's the most interesting of the three spawns. The way he's, like I said, the highlight, the whole using the, losing an ancient animal called the pangolin, bring that back. He is not as grabby as Flogger, which is why it's hard to choose who's the better beast, Flogger or Morax. Flogger is, doesn't give Tom a break. Flogger, no, yeah, Flogger doesn't give Tom a break. Morax gives Tom a challenge, so it's hard to choose. Like, do you like a beast that gives Tom a challenge, or do you like a beast that doesn't give Tom a break at all? So it's all on your pick your port, pick your uh, apples or oranges, this type of thing. I don't know. I, I mean, shrimps. Any cre okay, when it comes to sea creatures, giant squid would terrify me because I just find like tentacle like creatures, sea creatures like that. <laughs> Very little slime of that. But I find creatures like the pangolin to be so interesting. Ah, it's really hard to choose. If I had to choose, I would maybe say Morax because he looks more cooler. But I don't know, it's hard to say. Still, though, Morax himself is a challenging opponent. You're rolling him to a ball. He's considered the deadliest of the free spawns. And I can easily see why. He gives Tom a challenge uh, more than Flugger or um, uh, Electro did, which is kind of easy when you think about it. But nonetheless, I think Morax is a great opponent for Tom. Um, if you want to go with Pokemon standards, he would be the Don fan of Pokemon. Or oh, Beast Quest. You know, the Don fan of Beast Quest or something like that, as my friend Adam Ferns would say. But yeah, there's my thoughts on Morax the Wrecking Menace. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it, and I hope when Adam Ferns does his review on this book, or when, it, or when he does his review on this series, but he will say that this creature is a pangolin and not something else, because I don't want him getting... He'll probably get it wrong or something, I don't know. We'll say when his series review comes out for that book. When his series review comes out for this series, 24. But yeah, there it is, guys. My attempt at doing... Um, Book free, more acts of the wrecking menace. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe that good stuff, hit the notification bell right in the corner down below. So you can stay in tune for all um, Beast Quest related Beast Quest related topics and other content on my channel. Join us next time as we continue on the series of series twenty 
four. I should actually get the book. Do I have the book? I had it. Where did I put it? Where did I put Crow Call at? I had it just a second ago, guys. Oh boy. Did I just lose Crow Call? I bet I find it next time I see it. One second. Where is it at? Should I get it up? I bet. Uh, I had it around it somewhere. If I can't find it, that's weird. Hmm. Did I put him in the box? No, I didn't. I just had him right when I was getting up off my butt. And now he's disappeared from sight. Oh, God. Um, whatever. Crocol is next, guys. So... Yeah, stay tuned for that one. Oh, I think I remember where I put him now. He's under my bookshelf. There he is. I put him in a safe spot so I didn't lose him, and it was so safe I forgot about it. But you guys have been in situations like that. Here he is. Um, yeah, next time is Crocol, the father of the fear. Wait, Crocol, the father of fear. Which I'm assuming he gets that title because of his free spawn children. It's Morax, Electro, and Flugger. Um, but yeah, next time is Crocol. Yeah, and I'm pronouncing it that way because it sounds basically right but yeah awesomeness there and I think that's either Tom or Eleanor I think it's Eleanor holding Tom's weapons in that shot because they're trying to throughout the series they're trying to twist us that that's not Tom like Tom's still a good guy and from this one it looks like Morax is facing Tom and since it's in the shading you could say, oh, it's Tom and his black armor. But you could also say, if for those who, you know, for, for, for first glance, you can make that as good Tom, and you can't really see much. But it is nice of them fooling us this way. So I'm curious to see, does Ellen get Tom's weapons, or are they trying to fool us and think that's Tom? I don't know. It's very clever what they're doing with these covers for this series. I like it. So I'm looking forward to Crocodile, the father of fear. Till next time, guys. Like always, peace.